In this video, we are going to discuss the harmful effects pollution have on wildlife. Pollution comes in many different ways and affects various kinds of animals. The UN panel of experts has found that one million animal and plant species face extinction. Tracking and taking pictures of the Earth's surface. Certainly the Earth. It offers an ideal means to monitor change. My work has always been about monitoring the land surface and forest. It is worse than expected. This is happening much faster than we've ever seen before. Today, we are the asteroid that's causing many, many species to go extinct simultaneously. In the next few decades, we need to do something unprecedented. Achieve a sustainable existence on Earth. But how do we do it? All types of pollution like land, air, and water can be very bad for animals and birds. Mainly, people are responsible for pollution owing to which many threatened or endangered species are going extinct. Not only the species, it also hurts people, fisheries, tourists, and other things. Let us have a look on how various type of pollution becomes a threat to the biodiversity. Effects of pollution on amphibians. To commence with, amphibians like frogs and salamanders have very sensitive skin. They have a unique ability to take in oxygen through their skin. But unfortunately, this ability proves to be bane for them when dangerous chemicals enter their body while breathing through dirty water. Runoff from rainy days often carries pollutants like pesticides, fertilizers with nitrogen in them, and heavy metals into water systems which sometimes weakens the immune systems of animals, which may have been the case with the Monteverdi golden toad. It also makes them look different or deformed, but in most of the cases kill the frogs directly. The birds and pollution. Pollution in water not only hurts amphibians, but also many other creatures. These chemicals also end up in the bodies of fish and animals. Small amounts of these poisons might not kill the fish, but they stay in their bodies. So, when hunters in the food chain like birds of prey consume the fish, it puts them in danger too. To cite an example, when the chemical DDT was used, it killed off a lot of peregrine falcons. The birds ate fish and small mammals that had been affected by DDT in their surroundings. The chemicals in those animals built up in the falcons' bodies through a process called bioaccumulation. This made peregrine falcons sick and made the eggshells of females who were laying eggs, weak. This made it hard for the birds to have babies, so they became an endangered species. Luckily, when DDT and other pesticides like it were made illegal, this species number grew and it was taken off the list of endangered species. Bioaccumulation and Sea Lions Sea lions and other sea mammals are another type of animal that are affected by pollution. Algal blooms that are harmful for sea lions are caused by fertilizer waste. This algae releases domoic acid, which is a poison. The dangerous algae is eaten by fish, which then gets stored in their bodies and when the fish is further eaten by sea lions, it leads to domoic acid toxicosis. The disease causes problems with the nervous system, seizures, miscarriages, and death if it is not addressed properly. However, by using less pesticides and fertilizers, harmful algal blooms can be cut down, which will help sea lions and their whole ecosystem. Marine Debris Marine debris is another dangerous type of ocean pollution which is waste thrown by humans intentionally or accidentally in the water bodies. It is hazardous to various marine species. With marine debris, mammals, birds, turtles, and sharks often get caught or entangled in nets and lines that fishermen have left behind or no longer need. Many animals eat plastic litter because they think they are food. Plastic bags are one of the worst kinds of trash that end up in the ocean. Plastic is eaten by sea turtles. Meanwhile, a lot of plastic trash is eaten by sea turtles in particular. Plastic bags are a problem because they look like jellyfish or algae, which are the main foods of some kinds of sea turtle. Researchers think that more than half of the sea turtles in the world have eaten plastic at some point. Plastic can make it harder to digest food and block their intestines when they consume it, make them feel full while making them deficient to essential nutrients they need. As a consequence, most of the time, the plastic stays in their bodies and kills them unless they are treated. 
Admittedly, reducing the distribution of single-use plastic and recycling plastics can help cut down on the amount of trash in the oceans and keep sea turtles and other animals safe. What happens to dolphins because of pollution? Both marine and land animals have to deal with different kinds of pollution like air, light, earth, and water. Dolphins are no exception to it. Pollution in dolphins just don't go together, and it hurts them in many ways. Chemical pollution, trash pollution, and noise pollution are just a few examples. These marine animals have to deal with oil spills, red tides, plastic bags that get stuck in their digestive systems, lost fishing gear that traps them, and underwater sounds that throw them off. These different kinds of pollution have different effects on dolphins, whales, and other sea animals. Let us have a look on these one by one. What oil spills mean for dolphins? Oil spills and other chemical contamination have been detrimental to dolphin populations for a long time. For example, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill of 2010 is still having an effect on the dolphins in the Gulf of Mexico. Researchers think that more than half of the dolphins in the area have died in the 10 years since the oil spill. The oil spill made the dolphins take in dirty air, which hurt their lungs and immune systems. Therefore, the exposure leads to long-term rises in death, miscarriages, and the risk of getting other diseases. What happens to dolphins when fertilizer runs off? Dolphins and other marine species have to deal with pollution from other sources as well. Fertilizer waste is a common cause of the algal blooms that lead to red tides. Algae grow because the fertilizer gives them food. Unfortunately, the dolphins either breathe in the toxins in the algae or consume them through the fish that consume the algae. Eventually, the poisons build up in their bodies, which are called bioaccumulation and causes red tides. During some red tide events, hundreds of dolphins can die in the area. How dolphins are hurt by plastic pollution. Plastic trash also kills dolphins, whales, and other sea animals. Scientists think that about 56% of the dolphins and whales in the world have eaten plastic at least once in their lifetime. The dolphins mistake the plastic for food, like squid, and eat it. Ultimately, the plastic gets stuck in their digestion system. An ideal exemplification would be a pregnant pygmy sperm whale which was washed up on a beach in Melbourne. This was a very sad case as the whale's stomach was full of plastic, which stopped the rest of its digestive system from working. What happens to dolphins when fishing gear is thrown away? Fishing gear that has been left behind is another type of trash or plastic that is bad for the environment. Some fishermen throw nets and other parts of their fishing gear into the water when they no longer need them. This is called ghost fishing gear. This gear moves around on its own and traps many different kinds of marine life, from sharks and fish to dolphins and whales. Dolphins and other animals often die when they get caught in fishing gear. What noise pollution means for dolphins. Although noise pollution is less destructive than garbage and fishing netting, it nonetheless causes great harm to dolphins. Marine mammals are affected in different ways by the noise from ship engines, military radar, oil drilling, and other human activities. Dolphins use echolocation to get around in the water, which involves sending out sounds and hearing the echoes of those sounds as they are reflected off of nearby underwater objects. But noise pollution makes it hard for dolphins to use echolocation and can even hurt their hearing. Unfortunately, dolphins that are scared by loud noises can also dive quickly, which can kill them because of the sudden and uncontrollable change in pressure. It is much more crucial to protect dolphins because they are harmed by numerous types of pollution. You can do your part by recycling, helping clean up beaches, eating fish from sustainable sources, using fertilizers and chemical pesticides in the right way and in small amounts, and giving money to groups that clean up pollution and protect wildlife. Moving on to the next type that is, sewage and its harmful effects on aquatic ecosystems. What sewage does to aquatic ecosystems? Wastewater and sewage get into water systems from a variety of places such as surface flow, septic systems, wastewater treatment plants, and storm drain discharge. About 3.5 million Americans get sick every year from things like swimming and fishing because the water is dirty. Surprisingly, many people don't think that the water they touched could have made them sick. However, polluted water has effects on aquatic environments that go far beyond making people sick. What's wastewater? Sewage is the term for the waste liquids as well as solids that sewers generally take away. 
The International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health says that wastewater is defined as any storm water runoff, as well as industrial, domestic, or commercial sewage or any combination of these carried by water. There are four main kinds of pollution which are from homes, factories, farms, and cities. If we talk about black water, it comes from human and animal feces while gray water comes from cleaning, washing, cooking, and gardening. Besides this, industrial pollution is made up of things like paper, pulp, chemicals, salts, and acids that come from factories. Whereas, agricultural wastewater comes from farming operations, contaminated groundwater, and farming methods, especially those that involve fertilizers and pesticides. Likewise, urban wastewater is made up of wastewater from homes and businesses, as well as sewage overflow and rainwater. Sewage and Wastewater Disposal There are three steps involved in treating wastewater. In the first step, called primary treatment, the wastewater is put into holding ponds. Heavy things like trash sink to the bottom, while lighter things like fats and oils rise to the top. Then, these things can be taken away. In the second step, or secondary cleaning, biological matter that is dissolved or floating in the water is removed. Most methods for second-stage treatment use aerobic bacteria to eat the organic matter in wastewater. Lastly, stubborn pollutants which could not be cleaned by secondary treatment are treated with territory or third phase, cleaning which cleans the water even more so that it can be put back into sensitive areas. Depending on the leftover contaminants, there are different ways to do tertiary treatment. Sand filtering gets rid of particles. Also, bacteria that accumulate polyphosphates can be utilized to eliminate phosphates while nitrogen can be eliminated using bacteria that break down nitrogen. Furthermore, the water is put in a lagoon where plants, bacteria, algae, and zooplankton eat the leftover pollutants. This process is called lagooning. The solid waste called sludge that is taken out during initial treatment is also treated in a second step. As mentioned earlier, bacteria is used to treat wastewater at this stage. So, it could be used to treat the sludge. Sometimes, the methane produced by the bacteria is enough to be used as power. However, the sludge can also be burned. While in another way to clean up the sludge, the sludge is first dried out, then heated to kill any germs, and finally used as fertilizer. Even though the Clean Water Act of 1972 clearly mentions that wastewater had to be treated again, some American cities and towns requested and received waivers. Meanwhile, around the world, about 2.5 billion people don't have access to good toilets. In addition to this, wastewater treatment systems are also affected by things like growing population, older equipment, and natural disasters. Wastewater in environments with water. Biological dangers, microplastic particles, soaps, and fats are some common pollutants found in wastewater from homes. While agriculture wastewater comprises of biological risks, salts, herbicides, and fertilizers in agricultural wastewater. Similarly, urban wastewater is made up of both garbage from homes and businesses and runoff from storm drains. Storm drains pick up dirt, pet waste, pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers from yards and parks. They also pick up oil, gasoline, dirt, and trash from streets and parking lots. As far as industrial waste is concerned, there are various chemicals, such as petrochemicals and other chemicals, acids, radioactive materials, and salts. Recent research shows that a number of drugs also make their way into waterways. In a 2018 report, the UOS, Environmental Protection Agency EPA, said that 53% of river and stream miles, 71% of lake acres, 79% of estuarine square miles, and 98% of Great Lakes shoreline miles that have been assessed are classified as impaired, that is, unacceptable for at least one designated use. Biologic Hazards in Aquatic Environments Bacteria, fungus, parasites, and viruses are all biological dangers that can be found in wastewater. E. coli, typhoid fever, salmonella, cholera, and shigellosis are all types of bacteria and illnesses caused by bacteria. Fungi include aspergillus. Some parasites are giardia, cryptosporidium, and roundworms. There are also viruses like hepatitis A in wastewater. About 3.5 million Americans have health problems each year because of sewage waste. About half of the wastewater that goes into the Mediterranean is not cleaned. Biologic waste from farms, homes, parks, and beaches causes health problems that affect more than just people. 
bacteria and other creatures present in freshwater use oxygen to break down the sewage which is present in the water with them. While breaking down sewage, these microorganisms can create dead zones where there isn't enough air to breathe. Consequently, it kills many fish and other animals. What's more, people all over the world get sick from eating shellfish that has germs from sewage. Human gut bacteria can spread to coral in marine settings and cause a disease called coral bleaching. Gradually, when coral loses its natural bacteria and algae, it dies because of unfavorable conditions. This makes zones where everything, from the bacteria to the fish dies in the coral environment dies. Hormones, which affect how fish and amphibians make babies, legal and illegal amphetamines, and antidepressants have all entered aquatic environments. Not only this, some of the drugs get into the sewer system when people pee and poop. Other drugs have been flushed down the toilet. One controlled study of how amphetamines affect aquatic organisms found that they speed up the reproduction of insects, lower the number of algae, and change the types of diatoms and microbes. Nutrient hazards in aquatic environments Both freshwater and marine environments get excess amount of the nutrients nitrogen and phosphorus from fertilizers and waste. This is called eutrophication. It gives rise to algal blooms which blocks out more light, which hurts plants and plankton and lowers the amount of oxygen in the water. As the algae die, bacteria that break them down eat even more of the oxygen in the water. In the worst cases, when oxygen is taken away, big dead zones form. For instance, the runoff of fertilizer and other nutrient-rich materials from the Midwest of the United States has caused a dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico that is 7,728 square miles big and has no air. Wastes from industry in water environments Most of the time, the same methods are used to treat both household and industrial garbage. However, industrial trash usually has a lot of different chemicals and sometimes heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic as well, which are not removed fully by sewage treatment plants, so they end up in rivers, lakes, and the ocean. Unfortunately, some waste may also be dumped or leaked into aquatic environments without being cleaned up. As a result, marine life is affected by sewage waste all the way up the food chain. Apart from this, heavy metals get into fish cells when they eat plankton, algae, and smaller prey that have the metals. Biomagnification is the name for this kind of growth. As other animals, including people, eat these fish, the heavy metals can build up to the point where they can harm the animal eating them. Heavy metals can also build up in fish in dangerous amounts. Indeed, a lot has been done to control over the release of industrial wastes like oil, radioactive waste, and chronic organic pollutants and thus, it has gotten better. Between the 1980s and 2006, oily wastes were cut by 90%. Having said that, these pollutants hurt environments right away and in the long run by poisoning or suffocating plankton, plants, and animals. Water Ecosystems and Air Pollution Soot and smoke released from factories also hurt aquatic environments. For example, when sulfur dioxide and water vapor mix, they make sulfuric acid, also known as acid rain. Acid rain and runoff lowers the pH of water, making it harder for fish to take in air, salts, and nutrients. Low pH also makes it hard for the body to absorb calcium. Eventually, when fish don't get the right amount of calcium, their eggs don't grow right and become either too hard or too weak. Not only this, calcium deficiency also makes fish spines and bones weak, and it makes crayfish shells weak. Meanwhile, acid rain also takes aluminium out of the soil, which makes it hard for crabs and fish to have babies. Moreover, insects like mayflies and stoneflies can live when the pH goes below 6. Hence, ultimately this has an effect on the food chain. Litter in ecosystems with water. Litter that gets washed into storm drains and then into rivers is part of urban sewage. About 70% of this trash gets up on the seabed, 15% on beaches, and another 15% just floats in the water. About 70% of the trash is made of plastic, and most of the other 30% is made of metal and glass. Microplastics, which are produced when larger pieces of plastic break down, make up the majority of the plastic. To conclude, studies show that more than 1,200 aquatic species deal with trash by eating it, living in or on it, or getting caught in it. This trash affects many different kinds of animals, such as fish, crustaceans, and mammals. 
So, it is the need of our to save the marine flora and fauna otherwise the day is not far when many species will go extinct and situation would reach such dizzy heights that it would be impossible to reverse it.